Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be introducing a new type of video to my channel and that is product update videos. You guys have been requesting this. So here I am. I think it's a great idea and I'm finally implementing it. So for those of you who aren't familiar, basically this is an opportunity for me to backtrack on products that I did mention in the past, but I feel like I didn't quite get enough of my opinion across. So for example, I think this is the most useful for hauls because you know what? A lot of times in hauls, I'll show you a product and then I won't ever mention it again. So this is a way for me after I've used that product to kind of tell you what I think. Also reviews, if I feel like I have an updated opinion that I kind of want to change or tweak a little bit, that'll allow me to talk about the product some more. So this is going to backtrack on products that I mentioned maybe in reviews, in hauls, first impression try-ons, things like that. I'm not going to talk about like every single product, but I am going to talk about products that I feel the need to give you an update on. So for this particular video I am going to kind of backtrack a little further than I normally would for this style of video since it's my first time doing it but as I get more consistent with the style of video the updates are going to be for more recent products. So this is going to start uh, from products that I mentioned probably around mid-January up until towards the end of February so that is the time frame for these products so I'm just going to get straight into it. <laughs> All right, so going back to around the end of January, I did a huge Sephora haul and then also a get ready with me. So I did pick out a few products from those videos that I wanted to update you guys on. So I did mention a few concealers. The first one I do not have with me. I actually... I don't know, it's packed away somewhere, <laughs> but it is the Hello Fab Bendy Avocado Concealer. I really love that. It's very lightweight coverage and it's very easy to wear, very natural, light coverage as well. It's more of an everyday concealer. I do like it. I find it to be really good for more mature skin. So if you have more mature skin and you're looking for a little coverage under the eyes, you might want to look into that uh, one. The next concealer that I talked about was the Cover FX Power Play Concealer. I like this. I don't love it. It doesn't knock my socks off. I really like the applicator of it. I just like this ball and stamping it. Shade wise, I got N Light 2. Personally, I think I would have preferred a shade or two darker, but it wasn't a bad enough shade for me to even bother exchanging it. But I don't know. I find this can look a tad bit dry on my skin, which I don't exactly love, but I think it's an alright concealer and I like it enough to keep it in my collection and continue to use it, but you know, once I'm done, I don't think I would repurchase this. And then the last concealer, I went a little crazy with concealer, is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer. This is their self-setting concealer. Uh, I got mine in the shade 21. I did say this was self-setting in the video. Honestly, it's really not self-setting the more that I've used it. I really do like it though. I don't think it's the best concealer concealer in the world, but I think it is really nice. This is something once I run out, I would consider repurchasing because it isn't drying under the eyes. It's what I have on today. It's not super high coverage, but it gives just enough everyday coverage. So though this isn't self-setting, I find that for my eyes in particular, just the way that the bags are, if I use just a lower lash line eyeshadow, I don't need to set this, but it does need set if I don't have any color underneath my eye to kind of cover up that. So I do like this. It's super lightweight and I do like not setting it, but it isn't really self-setting. I'm going to be honest. This works better when you set it, but it is a really nice concealer. I do like it. Okay, so the next product is from my Sephora haul. This is the Huda Beauty Matte and Metal Melted Shadow in the shade Private Jet and Shimmering Sunset. It's more of a pinky color, though I will say once blended out on the eye, it does look a little bit warmer. I've used this a few times. Um, I like like how I can just pack this in my bag and this is the only two things I will use. So if I like go away and I know I just want a simple, not simple, but I know I want that glittery eye, I will just pack this. It works fine with a brush to blend out the matte and then I'll put this on with my finger, the glitter side, and it looks beautiful. So I do like this. I don't love it enough to own every color, but I'm not mad that I bought it because I do like the quality of it. Some people have been having problems with this, but I personally like it. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I think it's a cute idea. So, okay. So the next one that I got, I don't even know if it was in my haul, but I do want to mention it even if it wasn't. So this is the Natasha Denona Mini Nude Palette. At first I was skipping out on this just because her other minis kind of disappointed me and these looked like colors that I already had. They didn't, okay, they didn't look like it. They are colors that I already had, but I heard such positive 
positive reviews about this saying that this is her actual good Natasha Denona formula that I did pick it up and I am proud to tell you that it is. This is such a good formula. This is a great way to get Natasha Denona for cheap. So my idea for this is to travel and have the Natasha Denona formula with me, not in a big palette. So this just, you know, as many of you already know, actually, this is a really, really good product and I'm so happy I picked this up. Also in that haul, I had these two Metalist Sparkling Foiled Pigment from the brand Touch and Soul. Oh, I have the shade Cream Peach on my lid right now. These are just, do you see how beautiful and glittery that is? These are awesome. I didn't get into these until a little bit later after I purchased them, but oh my gosh, they are a little bit messy. They're pressed in there, but they're still kind of loose, uh, but they are so gorgeous. So I have the shades Cream Peach and then Sun Aurora, which is more of a champagne with a green undertone. Um, and there's one more shade that I really want to pick up that's more of a rose, but if you're looking for a beautiful, easy to use glimmer on the lid, look into these. These are amazing and not enough people are talking about these these are so 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 good let me show you do you see that hold on yes i'm such a sucker for these glittery things so the last thing from those videos is the nars skin deep palette now a lot of you came for me because i use this on my face it is an eye palette but i just wanted to see if it could be used on the face because this looks like a face palette to me and it can work as a face palette but it definitely is more of an eye palette and i really really do like this the quality of this is very good it's not the most unique palette but it is a great all-in-one palette it has every color you need so this is great to travel with with. and honestly though it isn't the most unique it's such a good palette and it's one of those palettes that you're just going to use if you have it in your collection I don't know at least for me I felt like I might not have gotten so much use out of this just because it's kind of bleh but I use it all the time it is so so beautiful I also did a Jeffree Star mystery box unboxing just I got it for fun to see what I would get and there's two products in here that I do want to update you on so the first is the Jeffree Star Supreme Frost in Frozen Peach this I was so excited to get this because I've never had a Jeffree Star highlighter and I do not like this that much uh, because I do have it on right now and it is pure glitter. I don't know if you can see. I do have a highlight on underneath, but it's just like particles of glitter. There is a time and a place for this type of product, but I just don't really like it. Like, I don't think I would ever purchase another one of this formula, but I mean, I'm glad I have it. It's just not my favorite. I just wanted to update you on that. And then I also got the lipstick in Jeffree's Girl. I mean, I couldn't choose the color. I'm not going to bash the color. It's a little bit crazy. Uh, super, super bright, bright pink. Um, I do want to kind of bash the formula. I found this to be really drying and really emphasizing the dead skin on my lips. That being said, I had a lot of dead skin on my lips that day, but I just like more of a creamier lipstick formula. I feel like if I'm going to buy a creamy, you know, lipstick, I want it to be creamy and this just wasn't had a lot of drag on my lips um, but it's it is full of pigment I will say that so I think it just takes a certain type of person to enjoy this formula and this just isn't the formula for me I do believe he does have creamy lipsticks in his line so I probably would like those but just this one in particular I did want to update you that I just wasn't crazy about it so I also did a Riley Rose haul it was my first time going to Riley Rose and I bought some products that I was so excited to play around with I haven't really had a chance to get back with you about it so here we are two of the things that i was most excited to purchase were these ace beauty palettes i had seen these on instagram before and oh my gosh tell me how beautiful this product is oh aren't these beautiful this one right here is classical paradise and then this one is paradise fallen so for paradise fallen i did just post an instagram tutorial on a look that i did using this so check that out so i really really love the colors of this but the quality of this isn't the greatest it is very very hard to work with so i had problems blending these out i didn't notice patchiness but what i did notice was they just didn't blend out so I'd put them on the lid and then I would like rub my eye raw basically blending for an hour trying to get a well blended look. So I do like the colors in this enough to where I am planning on keeping this in my collection because it is usable for sure. But if we are talking quality, I mean this isn't the easiest to work with palette. It is 
it's tough to blend, okay? It is. And then this one, Classical Paradise, I did film an IG tutorial with, and then ugh, just the footage turned out terrible, so I didn't get this up. So with this one, I was really excited because it reminded me of a subculture palette. The lighter shades in this work very, very well, and I do like this palette for that. However, these deeper shades have like no pigmentation on them they do not define my eye look at all so that's just kind of a waste like i did multiple looks trying to get this palette to work and i just really really couldn't so these two palettes definitely i just they aren't quite there i'm gonna be honest they're not the best quality but they're i just love their colors and their layouts and the color story and you can get shades to work for sure you can get a pretty look with these palettes but you know just based on quality these aren't the best and they're difficult to work with just gotta be honest here and then the next palette that i picked up from that haul was the lime crime venus xl2 i will admit to you i probably haven't used this as much as i would like but i did want to give you an update from what i have used so far so i've created about two to three looks with this palette i've been meaning to do an instagram tutorial with this and i haven't so maybe i'll do that next uh but this is actually what i use today so it's all the shades that i use underneath the glitter so the glitter is not from this palette but before the glitter this look was still gorgeous and i love this palette i think it's really fantastic i mean some of the shades look like they'll be a bit more glittery on the lid than they were so for example eve i found to be a little bit underwhelming or just not what i was expecting but it was still gorgeous the mattes blend beautifully and this color story is so unique this is a great palette for spring and you know i said this in the haul but people complain that everybody's palettes were looking the same there's nothing unique this is unique and I love this palette and I think it's a great palette so I'm happy I picked this up and I need to use it more because it is so so good and then the last one I have used in other videos I've used it quite a lot actually but I did just want to actually verbally tell you what I think of it and this is the luminizer squad from the balm um, if you've been watching my videos and like reading the links and stuff this actually has been used a ton by me I don't love all of the shades don't really like Emma Luminizer. It's just like chalky white. And then Cindy Luminizer, it's chalky, not crazy pigmented peach color. I don't know. I just don't like it. But Penny Luminizer I like, and I love Mary Luminizer. Mary Luminizer is her most popular highlighter, and I freaking love it. It's so glowy, and like I said, Penny Luminizer is nice. So okay, I don't love all of the shades in here, but that's okay. I bought this palette to play around with the different shades that they had. So this was more of like a way for me to sample the highlighters and oh my gosh my luminizer are so good so i actually really am happy that i purchased this quad because i haven't experimented a lot with the balm and i'm so happy that this gave me the opportunity to and i found a really good highlighter out of it so next i did a whole dedicated review on this and i've seen this kind of rolling around on youtube appearing in people's videos this is the nars exposed cheek palette I mean, this packaging is gorgeous, and in my review, I gave this kind of a meh review just because these shades are super duper sheer. You kind of have to build them up and use the correct brush for it. So, I still don't love this palette. I did want to update you on that. This works best with natural hair brushes big time. Don't even bother using a synthetic brush because you're not going to like it. But I will say a lot of people have updated that they love this palette because they don't like a super pigmented blush. This is really nice because there's not a lot of fallout. You get just a little bit of color. I personally love blush. I like a pigmented blush. Not a super pigmented blush, but I like a blush that I can tap once or twice and get color on my cheeks. This just isn't it. It's just not my favorite blush formula. It looks nice on the cheek because it does add a little bit of a sheen. But I just wanted to update you to let you know that I still, like, I don't love it. Like, if this was taken out of my collection today for whatever reason, I wouldn't be that upset about it. So, not my favorite blush palette release. Okay, so last product. I did a whole wear test on this product and its concealer. This is the... Giorgio Armani Power Fabric High Coverage Foundation Balm. It did come along with a high stretch power fabric concealer, I think is what it was called, but I have updated you guys on that one and I loved it, so I just didn't bother with this. But I did want to update you on this and tell you that I still hate this. So like I said, this is the foundation balm. I'm using it today. It's emphasizing dryness that seriously isn't even there i swear my skin just doesn't look good and um it sits on top of the skin it emphasizes dryness my nose do you see this to be fair 
I did get sunburnt, but this wouldn't be emphasized like this with any other foundation in my collection. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't return this. I like the idea of how quick and easy it is to use, I will say that, but I <laughs> really hate this foundation. I haven't felt this strongly about hating a foundation in a long time, and I just wanted to update that I still hate this. So that is that for this video. I hope you guys like these types of videos. I hope I can do these fairly often as soon as I feel comfortable mentioning products and feel like I've gotten enough use out of them. And this also holds me accountable to actually like use these products so I can update you guys on this. Anyways, hope this video was helpful for you guys. I hope you liked it. If you've tried any of these products, let me know what you thought of them. And remember to subscribe to my channel to keep updated with more product updates. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys, have a great day.